I think it would be safe to say that Larry Nichols has probably forgotten more of these war hawk neoconservative type guys than most people will ever know about and certainly more than most people will ever meet. Larry, how are you today? I'm hanging in there, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well. You sound great. I know everybody is very pleased to hear that you are back in action. And for those who are just tuning in and seeing you for the first time in a while, Larry was out with some medical concerns, actually some quite serious medical concerns. So we're very pleased that he's back and he's been speaking with us weekly. We've reinstated the regular show. And Larry, thank you so much for your flexibility today. I've got such a full schedule. We're actually an hour earlier than normal. The good news is people can watch the simulcast on Larry's YouTube channel. If you have not yet subscribed to the Larry Nichols official channel, get over there on YouTube and you can watch our simulcasts as well as Larry's other shows. He's doing a lot of shows with Mary Ellen and Larry has so much information to share with us. It's important for people to get onto his YouTube channel. But really, the most important thing for regular listeners, if you're listening, if you value Larry's input, his insights, his opinion, his analysis, you've got to get over to NicholsLive.com. What you do is you just scroll down, click on the donate tab right there, and you can financially support Larry by going to paypal.com and using his PayPal address, nickelslive at aol.com. You can also send money and please send cash only to Larry. He's there in Conway, Arkansas. And really any amount, it's at your discretion, $5, $10, $25, whatever it is. Larry's here with us every week, and I mean, the guy's been through hell, literally. So if you listen regularly, and I know there's thousands of people, Larry, who do, I hope they'll get over to NicholsLive.com and sponsor you financially. Well, it would certainly help at a time like this. Let me say, Jason, to everybody out there, especially those that were concerned about faking, you know, a health issue. Well, I guess that's been pretty well done away with considering since January I've been either in the coma in the hospital or in the hospital or in some rehabilitation thing for the damage done to my body. So, you know, we've got probably three, four hundred thousand dollars wow. in hospital bills so far. And the good news is, uh, I'm able at this point, if we don't screw up anything, we're able at this point to use my Medicare, Medi, whatever, whichever one of the Meta something, Medicare, yeah. Meta, whatever. Medicaid, yeah. They, yeah, Medicaid, and you know, and they're paying, they're paying it off, uh, hmm. supposedly, or seems like they are. But well, you know yeah. we're we're still having to close out all of that business, and it still leaves us with an amount that's you know very far fetched for us to see. Yeah, and uh, so we need help. There'll be a little bit of asking for help. Still that's left okay. to go. Yeah, but we're just about out of it. Just about lived through the worst. And of course, Larry, you've got the regular day to day expenses of uh, living mm -hmm. your life that anybody would have. And we literally get 10, 12,000, even more viewers per week. If even a small percentage of those people were financially supporting you, you'd be in a much better uh, state to deal with some of these financial challenges. So I hope that our viewers will go over to nickelslive.com. People can also contact Mary Ellen directly. Her phone number is right there at nickelslive.com. If there's some other form of help that you want to provide or if these methods are inconvenient for you. Larry, you know, one of the things that's become so interesting about our interactions over the years, I'm just fascinated by your history and your firsthand involvement in some of these things that are so important. And it's weird because a lot of them are coming back around now. We've spoken a lot about William Barr, and I know you're 
much more positive on the attorney general than I've been historically, and that's, that's okay. You know more about him than I do. It keeps coming back to this Iran-Contra issue, and just this past week, President Trump has reached into the neoconservative bag of Project for a New American Century participants and pulled out this guy, Elliot Abrams. He's going to be the new special envoy to Iran. And for people who haven't heard of him before, Larry, this is a guy who was pardoned uh, under President George H.W. Bush by Attorney General William Barr for his involvement in Iran-Contra and lying to Congress. Everything old seems new again, Larry. What do we know about this guy? Oh, Lord, I've known Elliot for, although we haven't spoken in probably 20 years or better, but he was with our young Turk squad back when we were all young. Um, he, in my world, okay, in my world, well, you asked me a funny question. Yeah. You said, is he a good guy or a bad guy? Right. And I answered, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes is the answer. He is both good and bad, subject to the issue and the conditions. Pardon me one second. One second. Sure. No problem, Larry. And we're just going to look at some of the news reporting while Larry is situating himself. So this is a guy who's essentially stepping into the role of, I guess, John Bolton. He was the U.S. Special Envoy to Venezuela, which obviously President Trump has made it pretty clear he wants to uh, have regime change over there. And now he's becoming the special envoy to Iraq. So is this the regime change mogul or what is it that we expect from this guy? All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay. I had to take I had to take my two o'clock medicine or three o'clock medicine and they get clogged up in my throat and I just Ooh. have to be careful. But anyway, he uh yeah. <laughs> the answer to your question was yes, which is a peculiar answer unless you know Elliot Abrams. One yep. day you can get up, <clears throat> and depending on the issue, circumstances, etc., he's a good guy. The very next day you can get up, call him, and <clears throat> he's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Working for the wrong team. Huh. Now, he is custom made for politics. He is bred for politics. <laughs> He's perfect for the political arena. Now, Trump made a good decision in bringing him out of forced retirement. He did. Because if anybody can uh, get down to the nitty gritty with a country like Iraq, it's him. He can do it. Uh, Iran. Now, Iran, I'm sorry. And yeah. the problem, however, with Elliot is if you thought Bolton was an overly aggressive war dog. Right. Take Bolton times 10, and wow. you'll have Abrams. Mm. Now, Elliot has, you know, he, he has done it all. <laughs> he, he's been for the good, the bad, the ugly. He's been there. Yeah. And he's a good guy for us to have in place. He's the one person, Jason, that President Trump will not have to look over his shoulder at for uh, betrayal. Abrams uh -huh. will not betray him. He will Larry, not betray him. Isn't he kind of a dangerous guy, Larry? I mean, the whole nature of Iran-Contra was basically supporting these South American revolutionaries who wanted to overthrow, you know, the, the Contras were fighting the Sandinistas. 
Now we've got an established government in Venezuela that's socialist. I mean, it seems very similar to what was going on in the 1980s, and now we've got the same crew involved. I mean, this guy, Elliot Abrams, he was convicted, and the only reason he didn't rot out in jail is that he was pardoned, and also Attorney General William Barr played a role in that. It's interesting that the left is not making a bigger deal out of this. Oh, they will. They will make a big deal out of it. They just aren't right now. Okay. Remember, the far left, the left, as you would call it, they've got plenty right now that they're cooking. You know, they're in the process of cooking what they consider the big meal, and they don't want to confuse uh, the public. Today, Get off they the don't message. want to. I'm yeah. talking about today. Relative, relative, I say today, I mean relative guys to several days or whatever. It can't be more than two months because then the election's over. Right. But right now, they're putting their dollars and efforts into one person, hmm. and that's Abrams. And they right. don't want to get in. I'm sorry, they're pushing right now for Black Lives Matter. They don't want to get Abrams in to squash their Black Lives Matter. They want to save him until right before the election. Right. Now. What will get you about Abrams is when he finally was convinced that she needed to do a book, she started working on it, and she worked on it, and she worked on it until finally she put it together as best one could put something like that together. Hello, are you there? I'm listening. You're, are you talking about realism? Oh, okay. In democracy, is that the book you mean, Larry? Well, no, he he could have. He will not write a book downplaying President Trump, so he's safe there. Ah, oh, they got it. need. Yeah, they are pushing right now. Black Lives Matter. Right. But one day, right before the election, I'm not saying literally right before, but within probably 30 days of the election. You're going to see the sky light up like the biggest fireworks display in the history of the world. It's going to light up Elliot Abrams, and they're going to light up President Bush for introducing him to, you know, the... Bringing him in the cabinet for Trump. Yeah, him in. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. I know that viewers of Crowdsource the Truth are very skeptical of anyone, Larry, who is a member of this think tank, the Project for a New American Century. People who are students of 9-11 know that William Crystal and Robert Kagan founded this thing, and it's this public policy think tank where, you know, people like John Bolton, Elliot Abrams, uh, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, these guys basically hatched this plan where they decided that America needed to project its power around the world. And, you know, in uh, the late 90s, they felt that it was important that we prevented another economic or military superpower along the lines of the Soviet Union from rising up. These guys are staunchly anti communist. Robert Kagan is married to Victoria Newland, who I think was the Assistant Secretary of State under Hillary Clinton. Interesting to note that this guy, Elliot Abrams, was also Assistant Secretary of State. These are positions, Larry, that most people, I think most people, barely pay any attention to, but they're some of the most powerful guys in government, aren't they? Yes, they are. And this gets back to the issue of uh, people that are in incredibly high positions having to do with the running of the, you know, of America, <clears throat> but yet they weren't elected. Right. These are professionals that are in our government making huge decisions, but they were unelected officials. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, it's just wrong. It's wrong-minded from the very beginning. And, and, you know, Jason, this has got to be addressed. But even by us right now, if we want you to come out and say, you know, you're not talking bad against Trump, you're just not saying anything at all, which is kind of weird that you could be with him for that length of time and and not actually just not actually talk about the truth. Right. They're just not going to do it. Well, let me ask you this, Larry, because I think it's it's amazing to me how little even really very educated people who are kind of dialed in, it's amazing how little people seem to recall about Iran-Contra. You and I have discussed it fairly extensively. We know that it was a plan to basically fund the rebels who were fighting the communist Sandinista government, and this was done through a clandestine operation because uh, Congress decided they didn't want to do it. So it was totally illegal. There were a long series of congressional hearings where Oliver North was one of the primary focal points of it, but a much younger Elliot Abrams. I mean, it's funny. I look at these guys now. I remember being a young boy and watching this on TV and thinking these guys were all old men, but they look younger To me now, looking at them in 1981, they're younger than I am now. And then when we think about guys like the whistleblower who initiated the impeachment, he's kind of the age that these guys are. What what exactly was Elliot Abrams' role during Iran-Contra, Larry? Well, give me the short version of that. (laughs) What did he do? What what was Elliot Abrams doing during Iran-Contra? What was his role? Well, Elliot was a go-between between the officials at Iran and the president. He was the go-between. Uh-huh. It was his job to try to negotiate any kind of deal that that could be struck between the Ayatollah of Iran and President Trump. Uh, Reagan. And as a matter of fact, Reagan, and as a matter of fact, it was, thanks to his success, uh, a very successful operation until it got to the Ayatollah. Uh-huh. When, the, when the Ayatollah found out what this guy had done, I'm not talking about Abrams, but I'm talking about the inside guy for Iran. When they found out what this guy and Abrams had put together and therefore had been approved by Reagan, they literally killed the guy he was working with. Uh, Elliot <laughs> Abrams was working with. They killed him. Whoa. So, yeah, I mean, it's a that's one of the problems, to be quite honest, of trying to deal with Iran. You know, it's hard to get people to work for the Shah of Iran. I mean, it's just very hard. The Ayatollah, we saw it, Shah. The Ayatollah, it's very hard to get people because, you know, if you make a mistake, you die. Yeah, it's a very... uh I mean, there's nuances and subtleties to these cultures. I've never been to Iran, but even going to Dubai in 2014, Uh, there's subtleties to these cultures that, you know, unless you've studied them (laughs) extensively, you're not going to know. It's interesting, though, that Abrams, you know, initially this, this whole incident had to do with Nicaragua and Iran. Now we're talking about Venezuela and Iran, it's this really unusual Central America, Middle East kind of connection. But it, I mean, it all has to do with oil. Although Nicaragua, they didn't really have oil. That was cocaine, right? Well, no, (laughs) no. Now, you know, here again, forever, I will have to say it and people won't believe me. 
But the Nicaraguan resistance that I know, the people like Enrique Bermudez, uh, you know, you all of that bunch from Adolfo Calero. Shit, I can't think of all of them right now, but that whole group, which was the official group of the government, the 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 rebel government put up by these rich people in uh, Iraq. Damn. I mean, I get them confused. By Don't worry about uh, But anyway, so, Jason, let me back up and sure. just establish something that, that I think will help your audience to to understand. And I don't mean folks to be stuttering and acting sort of weird. Remember, I'm still under some secret consequences that I can't break or secret. Anyway, I'm I, sworn to secrecy. Right. And <clears throat> So I have to be careful. So I'm not stuttering and stammering because I want to. It's just everything I say, I must be damn careful right? that I don't cut my head off. Now, I won't literally have my head cut off, but I can spend a nice rest of my life in prison, and I just seem not do that. No, we don't want that. <clears throat> so here we go. Why? Is there an Iran that any deal they were making, they had to use supposedly Nicaragua? And then you turn around today, and now there's an Iran. And if they, if you go through them, you've got to be very careful. But once she sticks their face in it, the... Uh, how can I say this without getting me in trouble? Anyway, once you once you break the code, you're in trouble. You got it? Once you break the code, you are in trouble. But with these countries, the safest way to uh, make a deal is by using a surrogate. Uh-huh. A surrogate country. Oh. Now, that is kind of normal, Jason. It's been done this way going back to, as far as I know, back beyond the Civil War, but certainly it was used in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. You know, we used France. France was our surrogate, and we hoped that Spain would pick up its war against Britain. So okay. Britain would have to commit its soldiers and the in the Spanish fight, and not bring them here to down us. Uh -huh. Well, that pattern with the Iranian government and the Ayatollah of Iraq, that that system, that layered system, that secret system was done every day. Hmm. Somewhere, somehow, it was done. And so it put North in a very bad situation starting right out from the get-go. Hmm. He's, uh, you know, he's younger than most of these guys. He pulls out a question about... Uh, North and what he was doing, it's um, it's just the way they do business, Jason. Yeah. And I want to tell you more, but I just cannot. Surrogates have been have been used effectively in getting stuff for us from other countries, or getting other countries to stand up and fight for something. We need. Yeah. But they're not going to fight under our name. It's going to be under their name. 
Yeah. But we're making deals on the inside with the leadership. So anything they do, we're protected. And then whatever they do. Uh, it's plausible deniability, basically, is what you're explaining. This mm -hmm. complicated way of kind of roundabout negotiations. Now, uh, well, you see how com how complicated it is because I can't even tell you about it, Jason. I mean, I can't. <laughs> I'm not free like I am with most things you ask me to just blow and go. I, I have it. to be careful. Yeah. And I mean, that in and of itself, Larry, it tells us how much of this is still being kept secret. And so certainly somebody like Elliot Abrams is going to be very familiar with the protocols uh, pertaining to the types of stuff that you're talking about. I mean, the things that come to mind for me is when I see him hanging out with Mike Pompeo, sure, Pompeo is Secretary of State, but he was also the director of the CIA not that long ago. Right. And I mean, isn't the State Department and the CIA uh, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the State Department, CIA, NSA, uh, all of the little letter deals, their foundation is connected in some way to the CIA. All of yeah. them. And trust me, I know because when I was through basically with the work I was doing in Nicaragua, all of a sudden I was getting shot at by every side there is. Never knew where the bullet was coming from. Never, you know, I mean, it was an uncomfortable feeling. Could even be your own people. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, it's a, how do I say, it's an interesting study to look at the truth, the truth behind international relationships, international uh business and then you get the big one international quote what they call defense programs and sometimes it truly sometimes it truly is defense but other times it's an offensive posture right now it's interesting larry because there has been actually a fair amount of reporting on this uh here's something called think progress which is obviously a progressive-minded website, talking about, uh, well, this is from back in 2019 in February when William Barr was first appointed. This article is telling us that the new Attorney General William Barr is proud he helped Elliot Abrams get a pardon for Iran-Contra. It shows a picture of him smiling coyly, and I mean, obviously, this is something that was spoken about, but it's just one of these topics that doesn't quite grab people's attention. I mean, it really is amazing how when viewed in the context of some of the other international scandals that we have, I think I ran contra, Larry, it may well be the largest scandal that nobody remembers. Well, it, you talk about plausible deniability. It is a complicated relationship and you never know exactly which side we are on and you never know exactly like the abrams when he's an independent now he works for trump but you never know which of these guys is on your side which one has turned on you and trump came in thinking i guess that you know he can use these people to uh you know, to, to help advance his agenda, I guess. Done. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what, Larry, KAG is watching us on Periscope, reminds me that Think Progress is run by John Podesta. So that's interesting <laughs> because obviously he's an opposition research guy who's trying <laughs> to publish the most unfavorable articles about Donald Trump and his associates that he can possibly come up with. So that actually, I'm glad KAG reminded me of that because that's an interesting angle. It means that Trump is aligning himself with those who are against the Democrats, and I guess he's doing that at the expense of whatever 
baggage these guys might have. And uh, obviously there's something about Elliot Abrams that the left doesn't like or they wouldn't be publishing these articles about him in a John Podesta website. Well, they would, I would say this to the left, and I am not one to give them any counsel or advice, but they'd be damn wise to keep their mouth shut and not get into this, because they get in the middle of this, a lot's going to come out. And remember, Joe Biden has been in and around government in Washington, what, 30, 40 years. Right. Look what Joe Biden did in you know, with his son. Right. You know, that wasn't an accident. That was not something that just happened. You have to understand how the game is played thoroughly before you would even get near a project like the one his son was on with his dad. Yeah. Right. Now, Larry, okay. thinking back to when they had those congressional hearings, um, what was Joe Biden's role here? I'm actually just looking at some old AP articles here. It says Robertson slams Iran Contra hearings, comma, Biden on the verge of entering the 1988 Republican presidential race. The Reverend Pat Robertson condemned Congress's investigation of the Iran Contra affair as an unconstitutional trial and public humiliation of Oliver North and others. I mean, that's not quite true. It was a reasonable thing to be inquiring about, wasn't it? Yes, very much so. I so mean, the literally, was there was, literally, there was millions and millions and millions of dollars that were missing. Right. There were uh, thousands of weapons missing. Right. So, yes, it was worthy of an investigation. Was it worthy of a national public display? No. Why not, not that it though? wasn't worth it. Well, not that it wasn't worth it, but you didn't want to open that can of worms. Because when you open that can of worms, here we go. Now you got north, now, you know, from north goes such and such, from such and such goes to whatever. I mean, it's just one thing after another, Jason, and you never want to open that causeway. Never, never, never. So if I understand what you're telling us, Larry, this was such a sensitive and outrageous scandal that the notion of a congressional hearing that would air it out in public is so dangerous. <laughs> it's almost like getting the guys who actually perpetrated the JFK assassination, putting them on trial and asking them all the hard questions it's actually, it goes beyond being like that. A lot of the people probably were involved with the JFK assassination, including H.W. Bush, but that's a separate story. This article from the AP, it's interesting, Larry, because, I mean, again, I really would like to do a more in-depth study of the Iran-Contra scandal because it seems like when we look at stuff like Fast and Furious, nothing has changed. This type of, this is this the way of doing business in Washington, D.C. It is. And I appreciate Trump having the courage, the nerve, to bring <clears throat> someone like Elliot Abrams into his administration, because I assure you, Elliot is a loyal, loyal dog for whoever he's working for. And huh. President Trump could gain so much knowledge of how this damn old system works. He can't wow. now. It's his call. He does what he wants to do. I understand that. So. But isn't it strange, yeah, Larry, it. isn't it strange that people are making such a big deal? I mean, when we talk about somebody like uh, Roger Stone, okay? He's right. basically been charged with the same exact thing <laughs> that Elliot Abrams has. But Roger Stone... Right if he did lie to Congress, lied about something inconsequential that never even happened. They were asking him if he was talking to Julian Assange or Russians <laughs> or something like that. He lied right. to Congress. They're making a huge big deal out of Trump having commuted Roger Stone's sentence. Here we've got a guy who lied about 
something substantial related to one of the hugest scandals in history, and it's like one John Podesta article and then nothing. It's quite odd. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you'll notice, you'll notice in all of those investigations going back as far as I can remember, they'll go so far with the investigation and then it is like, uh, I don't know what you call it, it just stops. It stops. And when it stops, it's over. Mm -hmm. by, by over, I mean <clears throat> the powers that be, when you start opening certain envelopes that have magical uh, importance, they'll shut it down. Just like with Ollie North. Well, you say, well, they didn't shut him down. I mean, hell, they, no, they shut it down. That investigation, if it were allowed to go further, just like you said, uh, I believe, me personally, I can't prove it, so it's not worth hearing. But at this point, my mind is convinced that uh, there's a better than average chance that this elaborate scheme will not work in the first place. Hmm. Just shut it, it down, buddy. Okay. Do you see any parallels, Larry, between what's going on today and what was going on back during Iran-Contra? What I see, which is what I fight, the same thing. It's the same. The same thing. And, and Trump now has a person in his group that has, number one, worked for that group that want to take over our country. So he has worked with whatever country uh, needs their people, needs, whatever country that needs help, this is a way to get it. But their right. people involved in all these investigations and folks, please, Please. Some of you are bound to say, God, he sounds drunk because he can't hardly complete a sentence. I know what I'm trying to do, but I can't just. This is one of the things, guys, and you, Jason, this is one thing that I just am not at liberty to give you much about because it'll get you hurt. It's still basically classified stuff. I mean, the thing that's so mm -hmm. strange to me, Larry, is that when we think about, uh, you know, our friend here, Elliot Abrams, he's been involved in the Project for a New American Century. That is, mm -hmm. you know, front and center, you got Kagan. Kagan married to Newland. Newland is right smack in the middle of this Russiagate thing. I just, I'm constantly being you know, either questioning myself or people in the audience are saying, does Trump know all these things? I mean, is he deliberately putting these people into his cabinet so that he can have them center stage? I mean, I didn't think it was a good idea to put John Bolton in there. And it doesn't seem like it was some sort of genius chess move, or maybe it was. Bolton's out of the picture. His book kind of fizzled, didn't do anything. I don't know. You like Elliot Abrams. What do you expect? Yes. What would be your hope that he could achieve in this new role as Iran special envoy? Well, let me tell you why Trump put him in. I have not talked okay. to Trump about him, but I can tell you fairly well what he's doing there. Yeah. <clears throat> if you'll notice, since Bolton was put, since the day he was put in the penalty box, not just since the day he was canned or quit, but I'm talking about the day it all started, this release of this supposed statement he made, whatever. The book, yeah. Let me tell you, yeah, the book. Well, Bolton, <clears throat> Bolton just cut himself out. But he has enough integrity left that he did not destroy 
our country and our intelligence system, or at least I don't know that he didn't because I haven't read his book. <laughs> but uh, Elliot's in there because since Bolton has left, we have got to have someone <clears throat> dealing on behalf of all of us that is capable of being open and destructive to Iran, you're not, like you're not going to get them. You're not going to get them to join us. I'm not about Iran. You're not going to get anybody in the government of Iran joining us and saying, "Oh, we love you." You know, you're not going to get that. And so he's that searching tickles. for these guys that kind of put fear into Iran. Is that the idea? He needs hard-nosed guys to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he needs the. Uh, for his protection. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got to just clear out, and he will, and that's Bolton, of course. Yeah. And Elliot's, you know, Elliot's got a job to do, and it's a two-fold job that most people would not understand. He has to teach Elliot how he runs his ship. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this new role. I mean, he's just come over from dealing with Venezuela and now dealing with Iran. So, I mean, I guess, you know, when you want to deal with these tough customers, you need a commensurately tough customer on your side. I just don't know. I mean, all these guys that have been part of right, let me their... let me just yeah, yeah. Let me get to the punchline on Abrams sure. in Venezuela, et cetera. When I see Elliot Abrams brought into the Trump picture, and I, you know, and he's brought in quote unquote from the Venezuelan connection type thing. Yeah. Then uh, you know. I, I can tell you all, I see bad tidings coming. What do you mean? He wouldn't be here unless, well, I'm just telling you, he will, he will use, uh, he'll use Venezuela as his tool to move back and forth frequently for the president with Iran. So politically, I I said that right. it will be his vehicle. So now Trump, once again, will have a private, private link to communicate with Iran. And his link to Iran will be somebody that, especially the Ayatollah of Iran now, will know and will and remember what this guy is wanting <laughs> and yeah they can make any kind of exchange they can do this that and the other as long as they do it for example uh let's say iran <clears throat> let's just say venezuela agrees to sell oil to Iran at a low dollar range, you know, I mean, he'll put a deal together and it will look like it's Venezuela and Iran. But in truth, it will be Venezuela and Iran on behalf of the United States. Okay. Yeah. That's coming. It's amazing that Ayatollah Khomeini is still alive. <laughs> yeah, he won't be long. <laughs> he will not be much longer. So I think what I understand that you're saying, Larry, is that there's this complex economic relationship between Venezuela, Iran, Russia. All of these things are linked. And when we see an article like that thing in Think Progress, that is, um, you know, John Podesta probably knows much more about those links than I do. And uh, this article could be intended to actually 
you know, whatever message that they're trying to put out there, I think progress is probably intended to counteract whatever it is that Donald Trump's policy on Iran and Venezuela might be. And in the end of the day, this stuff all comes back to the United States and the petrodollar and the dependence on that system basically requiring everybody to transact oil sales and purchases in U.S. dollars. So it's kind of like a lot of plates spinning in the air at once. Larry, I, I know that you've been very uh, busy today. You've had physical therapy and stuff. I want to remind people who are watching us right now to visit NicholsLive.com and to tap on the Donate tab and go to PayPal.com using Larry's PayPal address, NicholsLive at AOL.com. I really would like Crowdsource the Truth viewers to help Larry, sponsor Larry if you're enjoying the show. This is really the best way to show Larry that you appreciate his insights. We're getting history here from Larry that nobody else knows because nobody was present there. And I'm sensitive to not overworking you. I know you've got another show to do on your official YouTube channel, which people should also visit and subscribe to. Larry, what else can you say about Elliot Abrams? Perhaps we can explore it further next week and in future shows. But for now, what do you think? Well, my relationship with Elliot has always been good. I can pick up the phone now, surmise, and call him, and he'd pick it up, and we'd talk about old times. Wow. But the, but the protocol is... You know, if I'm working a project, he don't pry on that project. If he's working a project, I don't pry into him. So you actually gain more not talking to him than you do talking to him. Right. But, yes. you know, Larry, one, one day, yeah. One of our viewers has just told me, this guy, Elliot Abrams, he's in the Council on Foreign Relations. Eesh. Yeah. Ah, no. that sounds swamp monstery to me, Larry. I don't know. <laughs> well, I know. Look, I know, but we're going to have to. Jason, this is what Yikes. Trump is finally understanding. We've got to get, if you're going to, if you're going to clean out the swamp, you got to get in the swamp and start fighting. Okay. You cannot sit back and surgically remove right. the trash from inside the swamp especially if you've never been in that swap. Yeah, you got to wrestle some alligators. Going, all right, Abrams is going into the swamp, swamp. He knows how to get in the swamp, and he knows what to do when he's in the swamp. And I'm telling you what you're going to hear just as sure as I'm sitting here very soon. You're going to hear about this exclusive, incredible shipment of oil mm -hmm. to Iran. You're gonna, you're gonna, and it's in the behalf of, you know, the Abrams and, and what he's doing. And it's all because as long as he's in there, Trump has a connection to Iran, and he has a connection, as you just found out, to the uh, Venezuela, CFR, yeah. everybody. The CFR, He's very connected. Yeah. yeah. He's very connected. And the good news is if you want somebody working for us that will kick the hell and squash a worthless country like Venezuela, he's the man. Yikes. He is the man, and you know, and it's coming, and it's coming, and it's coming. Right. And well, I all right, I think. Yeah, no, I want you to get some time to rest here before your next show. People are asking if you know Cody Shearer. That's a good question for our next show. I'm not sure if you've ever well, dealt I with can, Cody I, Shearer. No, I have not. So we can answer that one today without any loss of <laughs> anything. Great. I would like to say to the audience, folks, thank you all. Uh, your help financially, but more importantly, your prayers. Pull me through what I was telling y'all all along was going to happen if we missed 
the deadlines on the stuff we were trying to do or had to do. Well, we missed, and it did. It collapsed on me. My body collapsed, and everything inside it quit. So it was the power of prayer, and I'm not trying to get religion here or anything, but it was the power of prayer that made it possible for me to even be here talking to you today. Government that I know is a lot dirtier, it's a lot deeper than any of you, any of you out there can even imagine, much less understand and trust with with running this country. It's bad. Yeah. And Trump knows it's bad. But Trump has finally you know, he's finally had enough. He's finally growing up. <clears throat> and he's fixing to start slinging some arrows of his own. And I just sit back and be a punching bag. Yeah. This is what I, I wish he would have done this earlier on, but he apparently uh, thought there was no problem. Or that he could at least that, that, not that there wasn't a problem, but that he could that he could tend to it like he did corporately. Our government is far too complex to tend to it managerially like you would a corporation. It's just too complex. You can't do it that way. And Trump's finally seeing that. Right. Finally. It will be interesting. Interesting to see if he gets an opportunity at a second term, Larry. And like I said, we're going to keep our eyes on what's going on with Elliot Abrams. I always do like getting your insights on these guys because he's just a dude in a newspaper to me. And you've interfaced with the guy and know much more about him than I do. So, Larry, I want to thank you for joining us today, and I want to make sure you get a chance to rest up. We all want to see you continue your recovery. I hope that the people watching us right now will visit NicholsLive.com, and under the Donate tab, they're going to go to PayPal.com. Using Larry's PayPal address, NicholsLive at AOL, you can send them a financial contribution of your choice. You can also send cash to Larry in Conway, Arkansas, or otherwise get in touch with Mary Ellen. Larry, thank you for sharing that information with us today. We're going to have to keep our eyes on this situation, and I'll talk to you next week. Sounds great, Betty. Thank you all. Take care of yourself, Larry. See you soon, and thanks, everybody, for watching. You bet.